Hi, this is Jack Frew from SharePointJack.com. One of the things I like to teach when there's time is not just how to look at a script and try to figure out what it does, but how to figure out from scratch how to make a script of any kind. The task that you're going to see me do, because this was recorded as part of another presentation, I had just given a demo in that presentation of a script that enables versioning for every document library in the farm. So what you see next is me trying to create that script from scratch without any notes, without Google, without pausing or any of that kind of stuff. And, and the kind of things that I do in PowerShell to understand what the objects are, how to find the values that I need, how to explore, that kind of stuff. All right, so we've seen what some of these scripts do. And we talked a little bit about how it can be difficult to understand kind of the structure of this. So one of the things I thought would be really helpful is rather than just show you a completed script, let's see if we can figure out how to make one of these scripts from scratch. So what I'm going to do here, I've got a folder called scripts, and I'm going to create a new file in it. So I'll just right click and say new text document, and we'll call this live.ps1, and I'll get rid of the text extension there. And now I'm going to open this in Notepad++, go ahead and open that up there. And one thing I'm going to do in Notepad++, I see that it's telling me this is an ANSI file. I've had some issues with some file encoding types, so what I've found is that UTF-8 always works. So I'm just going to switch that over. So we'll go ahead and uh, encode and convert. I'll put some text in there so I can save the file. We'll call this live demo. And we'll hit save. And then we'll just put this away for now. OK, so what we're going to try to do here is we're going to work on some commands in the command prompt. And then as we figure things out, we're going to put those commands in our little PS1 file so that we're kind of building a script as we go. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. We've got our notepad ready to take some commands. And let's first figure out, if we were brand new to this, what can we what can we do with SharePoint? So one command you might want is git-command. And what we can do is we can say star sp star. And let's, instead of saying get command star sp, let's say get dash sp star. And this should be just the getters, yep. So what I started out with is I started looking for something that would get me all of the lists or all of the libraries, because that's what we want to set, right? We want to set the version history on all of our lists and libraries. And I looked through here, get sp. First thing was the L's, right? Get sp, is there a list or a library? There is not, right? I kind of looked for some other stuff, and I didn't see anything that looked like it was going to work. So I thought, okay, well, that's there's no direct route to it. And we do know that if we're going to traverse the SharePoint object model, we want to start you know, as high up as we can to get as much as we can. So the next thing I thought is, well, there's the farm. So let's look for get sp farm, right? So we scroll through here, and there is a command called get sp farm. So the next thing I do then is I run that command. So I do get sp farm, hit enter, and it brings back one object. Now this is great because it doesn't mean, I should say it does mean that I don't have to fiddle with multiple objects and what have you. I can actually investigate the properties of this almost immediately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable called farm and I'm going to assign it to get farm. So let me hit the up arrow. I'm going to hit the home key to bring the cursor back to the left. I'll type in uh, farm equals. And now if I type in farm by itself, it should give me the same output. However, one thing I can do is I can say farm dot and I can start tabbing through things. Now, if you see a value that does not have the left parenthesis on the on the end of it like this, that value is a property. Often you can set it, almost always you can read it, but it doesn't take any values and it doesn't necessarily do anything, right? As we tab through all of these, I'll just kind of hold this down until we get to the bottom. You'll see that we we started over at the A's, we were going alphabetically, but now we've got that that bracket on there. That's not me putting that in, that's the system. Those are our methods and those are things that do things. Those are going to be a little trickier to use because in many cases you need to know what to put in here and then close the bracket off, right? So this is pretty neat. I've got this farm variable and I can start looking through some of the things. Now, one other thing that you can do is there is a command called get member. So if I say dollar sign farm, and I pipe that to get member. It gives me the same output that I just did by using the period key all at once and in this nice little table. It tells me that this, for example, is a method and gives me a little definition of it, right? So get method is handy if you can remember to use it. I find that I can always remember this farm dot 
and tabbing through things, right? Because that is so familiar in so many programming languages. Even even you know VBScript had this, right? So uh, if you don't remember get member, just remember the dot on a variable, and you're you're good to go. What we were looking for then was I wanted a way to find all of the web applications. And as it turned out when I did this before, and I think it's still the same today, you can't get to the web applications from the farm object. Don't know why it is, it just is. So then we wanna go back to our git command thing. So let me hit F7 on here. And let's go back to our git command with the SharePoint there. And let's look and see if we can't get a farm, can we get a web application? So let's go down to the W's here. And there's get SP web. Now that would be an individual web. That's actually a sub module of the SP site. We want the web application. So here it is, get SP web application. So let's try that. Now we've got a little problem. We've got two of these things coming back. So what we want to do is we want to select one of these and assign it to a variable so we can mess with it, right? So let's take a look at how we would do that. I'm going to say something like, well, first I'm just going to go up to the thing here. I'm going to pipe this into the where object command, which is where object, but most people just use where. So I'm just going to use where. Where in PowerShell 2.0 has a pretty weird and specific syntax. Now they do have a short form of it in 3.0, but it doesn't work for everything. So let me just show you the syntax. It's dollar underscore period, and then some name of some field. Well, we have two field names right here. We have a display name and we have a URL. So I'm gonna use the URL. So I'll say URL, and then in our where clause, we have to say something like dash EQ for equals. Do not use the equals like this, because it doesn't work that way in PowerShell. We're going to say dash EQ. And then we'll go ahead and put in a URL. I'll use my little uh, quick edit mode here to just select this one. And I'll put in some quotes here, paste it in, and put in some more quotes. And then I'll close off that right bracket. Okay. So I hope everyone sees what I've done here and put it up at the top. Get SP Web Application brought me everything. I have two in this particular case. We want to explore. We want to investigate. We want to play with just one of those so that we can look at its properties because this collection doesn't have properties for each individual one. It's got the collection, right? So I'm saying get SP Web Application. I'm taking the output of that, piping it into the where command, saying I want where the URL is equal to this. And I'm going to hit enter. Perfect. Now you can see I'm down to just one. So let's go. Up arrow again, we've got the same command. Let's go home key. We're back at the left side now, and I'll say WA for web application equals. I can kind of take a look at this and I can say, well, let's see what we've got available. And again, I can tab through these until I'm all happy, or I can use that get member. And since we're short on time, let's go ahead and do get member so we can take a look. It'd be great if I could type too. Okay, a little bit more scrolled by on the screen there. Don't know if you can see that. Lots and lots of properties, not that many methods, but lots of properties here. So the first property is alert flags, and we go down from there. Now, remember, this is a web application that we have. It's a web application. So we are looking for what's in a web application, and web applications hold what? They hold site collections. They hold nothing more. If you're looking for a web, those are inside the site collections. If you're looking for a document, those are inside the webs. So the next level down that we're looking for are the sites. And I can see right here that there is this sites property. Perfect what I'm looking for. So knowing that there's a sites property, and I can get that by using get member, or I would have gotten it if I would have typed in WA, hit a period, and tab my way all the way down. Let's just go to dot s and we'll tab and quite a few s's too there we go so now i have got wa dot sites perfect so let's hit enter and see what we get back wow we've got three of these we've got three site collections so we're starting to work our way down at this point i'm starting to say let's put some notes in this text file so we can come back to it so the first thing that we did is we can say well we tried get sp farm no luck right then we can say we tried get sp web application and that worked so our first line that we used for that if we come back to the command prompt here and we hit f7 that was get sp web application now 
This line brought us one web application. That line brought us all of them. And for our script, that's what we're going to want. So we're going to say all web apps. It was get SP web application. All right. So we've got this variable called all web apps. Now we want to do things one at a time with these web applications, much like I did before, where I limited WA, you kind of see back here, to just one. Instead of using the WHERE clause, though, because we want to do this repetitively and we want to do this kind of systematically, we're going to use that for each loop that we talked about with the donut example. So I'm going to say for each, and we will say one web app in all web apps. And now we're going to do something. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my brackets here. And we'll just say do something with each web application. All right. And one of the other things that we figured out here is we saw that web application dot sites did something. So let's just say here uh, we know that wa dot sites is good. All right. So we come down here and we can't use wa dot sites because why? Because we didn't use wa here. Now I could have done that. I could say wa here if I want to. It doesn't really matter. I like to use kind of longer names that are you know like really expressive later on. So we'll say one web application and then let's just copy that and paste it and put it here. So one web app, uh, dot sites is going to give us all of the sites that we have. So this is good. Lists all sites. So now we want to kind of figure out what to do about this. So we want to go one more level down. So let's do this. We know we've got our sites. We know we need to deal with these one at a time. So let's start another for each loop. For each, um, let's go here. We'll say site in, and we can say one web. Oh, I think I just had that in the copy buffer, didn't I? I can probably just paste that dot sites. And I need to put a dollar sign in front of there. Hit the end key and parentheses there. And I can put in another set of brackets so I can do some more stuff. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to deal with the sites. The trouble is I don't know what the sites are going to have. Over here I know that three sites looks like this. But I want to deal with just one site. So there is another technique that we're going to use. We're going to try to get an individual site from this. Now what we can do is we can do a variation of what we did last time. I can say WA sites. I can pipe that to the where command. And I can say dollar sign underscore dot. And then we're going to say this is going to be URL. That looks like the only one that's unique here. This compatibility level is all 15. So we'll say URL. And we'll say dash EQ. And then we're going to put in one of these URLs here. So we'll do that. And let's just confirm that that gives us one of these. And it does. Now, there is a shortcut that you can use if you only want the first one or the last one. And that shortcut, I'm going to tell you now, and it doesn't matter which way you do this. This is handy, though, because you don't have to remember fields and stuff. I'm just going to say pipe select dash first one. OK? Uh, does everybody see what I just did there? Let's, let's clear the screen for a second. Let's start over again. WA.sites gave me all three sites. If I say WA.sites and I pipe that into select dash first one, I get the first one. Now, is that any better? Is it any easier? If you're just getting started, is this getting more confusing? It might be. The nice thing about select first one, there's nothing about this that has anything to do with these objects. I didn't have to copy and paste a URL. I didn't have to know that this column was called URL or what have you. So select first one or select last one, which would have given me this one here, um, is, a, is a clever way of just getting one object if you just want something to play around with properties in the command prompt and you're trying to kind of figure out what's going on. Either way you look at it, I have two ways that I can use to get one of these things back. So now that I've got one of them coming back in my command line, I want to assign that to a variable so that I can play with that dot prompt thing again. So I'm going to go back up to this. I'll hit the home key. We're going to insert some text. And what are we looking at? We're looking at individual sites. So let me call this site equals. And now if I type in dollar sign site, it should be the same thing. And it is, right? I've got one site. Now, the interesting thing is here, we've got this one site. It doesn't list a whole lot. It's only listing these two things. But when I say site 
dot and I start tabbing through, you're going to see there's an awful lot of stuff. And one thing that I spotted almost right away when I was messing with this was this one right here, site.allwebs. So if you understand a little bit about the SharePoint object model, and this is certainly something that's helpful all the time is to, to kind of understand how SharePoint does things. You've got your web application. That's kind of where it shows up in IIS. Then you've got your site collection, right? Site collection is the first container that gets kind of written to the database. Inside the site collection are webs. And the first web is always called like the root web. In other words, the this URL here has a site collection that matches that URL. It will also have a web in that site collection and they'll share the URL. The first web, uh, the first, yeah, first web is the same as the site collection when it comes to the URL. So let's look at what this all webs feeds us back. And in this case here, it's not very exciting because we only have one of them, but at least it's there. Uh, now, um, what we want to do here is we want to take all webs and we want to ins inspect the first one, right? So I've got site all webs and I'm only getting one back and that's cool. Let's do this. Let's say um, web equals and we'll say sites dot all webs. Now, because I'm only getting one back, I know that I'm only getting one, but again, because I'm paranoid, I'm just going to make sure for sure that I'm only getting the first object back. So now if I type in dollar sign web, I didn't get anything back. So did I do that wrong? Slight sites, all webs. And oh, I've got an S in here. Does everybody see that right there? I added the S right there. So let's go back two lines and correct that mistake there. And by the way, I just used the up arrow key to go from, you know, last command. And now let's look at web and see what it looks like. There we go. Same thing. So now I've got my web. I went from sites to individual web. So going back to my text file, let's take some notes here. WA.sites gave us all our sites. We saw a list of those. And now for each site, we're going to do something. So let's come in here. And we found out that dollar sign site dot all webs gives a list of all webs. Now, when I say it gives a list, here you kind of have to go on faith. We only had one web here, right? So this part could be a little confusing. I probably could give you a demo. I think this... Uh, this this one might have a couple of different webs under it here, but but trust me when I say that when we say all webs, in most cases are going to be more than one, right? So we're gonna we're gonna need another loop like we did before to go and and dig into that. So we want another loop, so that'll be for each, and we'll say one web in site dot all webs, like so, and we'll put in our brackets. Now. We've talked about site, and you can even see I did that mistyping thing where I use sites plural, which we had WA sites up here. Why are we using site and not sites when we came up here and we found that sites was what we wanted? Well, the reason in the script we're not doing that is that we've got this for each loop. So this one application.sites represents the whole collection of sites that we had before. So that, that would represent up here in this text, it represent these three sites, right? When we come back to our script here, this for each loop assigns the value dollar sign site to one of these at a time every time it goes through the loop. So from this point down, when we're going in the loop and we're referring to stuff, we really don't want to refer to the whole collection anymore. We want to refer to just the one we're working on. So the one that we're working on is dollar sign site. By the way, didn't use the same case there, but case doesn't matter in PowerShell, so that's good. So we want to go through this site, and now that we found that there's this all webs that'll show us the webs, we're good and we can we can get into that. Now, why do we want to go into the webs? Because the webs are where these document libraries and lists are stored, right? So we need to get down that far. So let's take a look here. We've got this web and it's I think it's time to play around and see what we can find in web. So I'm going to say web dot and we'll start looking around here. And there's a lot of stuff. There's quite a bit of stuff to be honest with you here. So you could just kind of tab through the stuff. And by the way, these are all properties, meaning they, they should have a value. So any of these things, um, if I say, well, let's see if I can find one here. This one, if I just hit enter, it should give me some feedback about what that is, right? So I can come back and type in dollar sign web and hit a dot and I can, I can keep going for stuff. Like what was the first one? Wasn't there one that said alerts? What does that look like? I guess we don't have any alerts on this. Web dot, well, we're going to keep going. 
So kind of go through and we look at all this stuff here. And again, I can also do web and I can pipe that into get member. So for the sake of speed here, because we have a class, we'll just say get member. It'll show us all on the screen. So we can see here, we've got quite a bit of properties here and uh, quite a few methods as well. There's an awful lot happening in this web object. And you could probably spend some time just reading these and kind of getting an idea for what they might do. Here's delete. I don't know if I'd play with that one, but I can kind of guess what it does. Oh, look at this though. Here's get list. And we come down here and we look and we've got some more stuff and we've got some uh, methods and properties. So we are looking to, there's no get library, but we know internally, or maybe you don't, but in SharePoint, list and libraries are really the same thing. Get list seems to be a method. Are there any properties like all lists or anything like that? Let's take a look. There's all users here. I don't see an all lists. Let's go down and see if there's a list. Here we go. Here is a lists property. Now, why might I want to use lists as a property instead of get lists up here. Well, first of all, this doesn't have the plural form, it has the singular form. So this looks like something, if I knew the exact name of a list, I could put it in there. I also have one for URL, so that, that might come in handy. But since I, I don't know what, what the names of the lists are going in, I'm looking for something that's kind of plural, something that has more than one. So let's go back here, and we had this list. And remember, what, did, what started this whole command here? We were looking at the web object. So web.lists is probably going to give us something that we want. So let's clear the screen here. And let's say web.lists. And let's see what we get. Oh, look at this. We're getting a lot of junk on the screen on this one. Every once in a while, I see some fields on the left there. But on the right hand side, I'm seeing like just tons and tons of what looks like maybe XML or something like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit control C on my keyboard, which should cancel this command. And it looks like it did. And now I'm going to go up and I'm going to look for something that was on the left hand side. Those look like the field names. And I've got my buffer, by the way, set pretty high. If you look over here, you go to properties and you go to layout, you can set your screen buffer size. Mine is set to four nine. So it's it should allow me to scroll back far enough. I don't think this will have filled all that up, but uh, there we go. Okay, so schema XML. So that's what this is. It's some XML describing the schema. Here we go. Properties XML. Here's a title. That might come in handy. Content type publishing error log. Is there anything else like the word name or anything like that? I don't see anything else with the word name. So that title looked like it might be something to look at. So what we're going to do is let's go clear screen and get this off the screen. And I'm going to go back to the last command I used. And we saw that that spewed out a bunch of stuff by default. So I'm just going to say select title. And let's see what we get. I think we've hit pay dirt here. Okay, this looks to me like this is a list of all of the list that I have. In fact, this might be a great time to go over to my team site here. I'm on my root website here. And if I go to this gear and I can say site contents, let's see if there's any correlation between what we've got in here and what we just pulled up in PowerShell. Okay, so now we're looking at the site contents. So this is interesting. I don't know what the heck that is, but there's something called an, probably announcements. Let's go back and look. Hmm, there's an an, first one too. Okay, let's go back to uh, here. We've got content and structure reports, documents, form templates, and images. Let's see what we've got here. Content and structure reports, documents, form templates, and images. So interestingly, I've got more stuff in here than is showing up in the user interface, but this definitely seems to be you know, what I'm looking for. Now, what I would do next, I would say, is I'd probably want to look for some property of these things that indicates a difference between these two. And that's going to take a little bit more time than we have today. But the, the process would basically be something similar to what we did earlier when we were scrolling through all of that stuff up at the top, which had everything in it. It had a lot of different field names listed. And you'd probably try to, you know, maybe do, uh, let, let me just show you a technique that I would use. We won't go through the whole logic piece, but we had our web lists and we did select title. 
Now, remember when we um, we did just we didn't even use the select. We got just tons and tons of stuff. This is another case where select first one might come in handy because it's only going to dump one of these things on the screen for us, which means we only have to worry about looking at one. And it also means that if that giant glob of XML is in the middle of it, the, the block instead of at the very end or at the very beginning, it'll be real easy for us to tell kind of where it starts and where it, where it ends. So let's take a look here. Lists, parent web, fields, user, custom actions, forms, data source, items, folders, permissions, created, last modified, description is root folder, uh, or root folder is site asset library. Um, title, direction. We're looking for any kind of symbol that would let us, you know, skip essentially these libraries that maybe are system libraries. And I suppose there's no harm in setting their versioning, but if we don't have to, maybe we can filter out, you know, s some of these. So I'm just kind of scrolling with my mouse wheel right now. We're going down to the bottom, version, item count, um, author. I don't see anything here there's base template so that might be something we could key on because if, it, if it's a known template template feature ID view URL it's another one that we might be able to use default view all items and what have you I don't want to spend too much time on this but uh, oh well here's hidden so what's that let's go that hidden might be interesting let's look at this hidden property here and again I'm just trying to go through the process the way I would have the first time I did this. When you don't know the answer, when Google doesn't turn up what you're looking for, or Bing, or whatever your choice is. So let's look at that hidden thing. We're going to go back to the one that we said select title, and let's also select the hidden field. So that was called hidden. And let's see what that gives us. Oh, this is very interesting now. Look at what we've got. So this first one that showed up is an, and it is not hidden. And if we go back to our <coughs> UI, there's an. Now the next one in the UI that shows up is content and structure reports. So let's go look at that guy. And we come down here, we've got this cache profiles, but guess what? It's hidden. Composed looks, it's hidden. Content and structure reports is that hidden? Oh, you know, I missed the app data. So these three are hidden. Let's just draw that all the way across. Content and structure reports is not hidden. So I think we have found the kind of flag that we need in order to only show us the hidden stuff, so or, or I'm sorry, the non-hidden stuff. So let's go back to our notepad file here, and let's start taking some notes of what we found. So we are looking at an individual web, and that's kind of what our for each loop is going to do. And what we're going to say is we found that if we do, you know, one web at a time, uh, web.lists seems to show all the lists. And then we'll put a little pound in here. We'll say, you know, problem possibly is that it shows hidden lists too. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to get a for each loop in here to start going through the lists one by one, right? We've got this whole collection of them. We're going to, we're going to get another for each loop. So let's go, um, go over here and we'll go here and we'll type in, um, trying to get this lined up here for each. And we're going to say one list in. And here's the first place we're going to do a little deviant from what we've done. We're going to say web.lists. But what we're looking for, and I'll put this in comments for right now, is we only want non-hidden. You can't see that because it went off the screen here. Let's move that over here. So how do we finish this statement and make this work? So let's come up here and let's play with that. So I've got this uh, web list select title and hidden. Well, that that's nice. That gives us a, a list of what we're looking for. But we only want to see the ones where hidden is equal to false. So I'm going to show you a common trap that people fall into in PowerShell. Okay, I'm going to pipe this into the where statement, and I'm going to say where bracket dollar sign underscore because dot because this is our, our thing hidden, and then we'll say dash eq and we'll say false. Now, there's two problems right here. The first problem is that false in PowerShell is not false. It's dollar sign false. Okay, so let's see if this works. Okay, it looks like it worked. It did not work. Okay, the second problem with PowerShell comes 
from this piping mechanism. I like piping, but piping can get you in trouble. And it's one of the reasons that when you look at my scripts, a lot of them are very spelled out like programming code, as opposed to one command piped into another, piped into another, piped into another, right? So the problem here is this is returning all of the lists, everything about them, right? Their title, that XML that we saw, all of that stuff. As soon as we pump it through this, and we say, I only want to select the title and the hidden, all I'm getting out of this, all that's going through to this where clause are these two values. The rest of that stuff isn't there. And if you don't believe me, let's just show you something here. So this is giving me all of that. Let's take this now and say select first one. Okay, so I've got just this first one. Let's give that a variable. We'll call it temp for a second here. All right, so now I've got temp. And it, it shows just the one it's, uh, it titles an on the left and the far right it says hidden but watch what happens when i type in an and i hit uh, i'm sorry temp and i hit a period and i tab through it watch this i've got hidden i've got title i've got a couple of little default things and that's it this this whole thing has been stripped remember that xml that we saw not here and it's not like i'm doing something wrong here i mean we just go over here we could say get member it's going to be a pretty small little list here, right? What happened is when I said select title and hidden, I stripped out everything except for those. So as we wanted title and hidden in order to figure out what we were doing, we kind of have to backtrace our steps and get those out of our command. So let's go and do that now. I'm going to go back here. Uh, let's see. I want to find the line. This one right here. Web.lists, select title, hidden, where hidden equals false. We're just going to come back over here and we're going to remove this middle pipe and we'll remove that there as well. So now what I'm going to get is if I run this, it's going to give me all that XML again, but because of the where clause, it's only going to give me XML for ones that aren't hidden. And if we stop this and we look through it a little bit more carefully, you would see that the title of each of these are in fact just the titles of the non-hidden ones. So let's hit control C, let's go up an arrow. And this is really critical. We found something here that's really a value to us. So let's copy that and let's put that over here in Notepad++ on the script that we're building, okay? So let's go over one line above this. Let's paste that in. Let's put a comment here and say, this shows only hidden, uh, actually non-hidden values, lists. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so now, because this is such a long command, I might like to run this into a variable separately and then use that variable in the list. So I'm going to say non hidden lists equals web list is where blah, blah, blah. See that? So now if I come back to this in six months and I don't remember what I did, I don't have to kind of be super cautious about what's in the far right hand side because it's a pretty long statement. It would have, it would have fallen off the edge of my screen. I don't need this anymore. So let's get rid of that. And now since I've gotten all of the lists, where the hidden flag is false, I can come over here and I can put that there. And we didn't copy and paste our dollar sign, so let's do that. Okay, I had to stop the video right here because I just made a mistake and I wanted to call attention to it. The dollar sign web dot list that I pasted in is not the right variable name. It should be dollar sign one web dot list, right? Now, the reason I'm calling your attention to it is we're going to talk about this again in a few minutes, but uh, for right now, just know that that's not what the name should be. Now, interestingly enough, it works. So we're going to go ahead and watch the rest of this video, and then we're going to talk about why it worked and what would have happened to you later, because it wouldn't have worked forever. So everybody with me so far? Let's put in another set of brackets. I always put both brackets in at the same time, and it, what you'll notice is as we come down here, the brackets from before they're below us and you want that because you want these things to be matched and you don't have to worry about you don't you don't want to be worrying about you know mismatched brackets and stuff so anyway now i've got an, another loop that's going to deal with a list one list at a time okay so come back over here and we're doing kind of the same thing here except for we got all of this output don't really care about that let's do uh Let's do the first one so that we can inspect one of these and see if we can find something about version settings. We're at the point where I would expect the version settings to be. So let's say uh, select first one. 
That one, by the way, is important. You can do select first two, first three, first four. And if you forget that, uh, just select first doesn't work, right? So you, you need that number. So I'm only looking at one of these list items now. And we are looking for some kind of versioning. Now here's version here. That's one thing. Let's go all the way to the top here. I should have probably, let me clear the screen and run that command again, just so I can go all the way to the top on the scroll bar here and not worry about going into the other commands that we ran. List, parent web, views, items, folders, last item, modified date is site assets library, title, okay, then we got some XML. Haven't found it yet, we're, we're still looking here. Okay, there's some more XML. Still scrolling with my mouse in case you're wondering how this thing's moving. Still scrolling. Starting to wonder if I should have used the scroll bar on the right, but there we go. Okay, here. So there's version. That's nice. Item count, major version limit. And, uh, hmm. So major version limit sounds like something I want. In fact, I think when we ran this script earlier that, that I showed you, we probably set this to be 10. So that's that's where that is. We found that, but I don't see anything yet that says something like enable versioning or versioning enabled or whatever. So let's keep looking for a property. Hey, what's this one right here? Enable minor versions and enable versioning. That's what I want right there. Enable versioning equals true. So let's take this in our loop now. We'll go back here. And for each one list, let's say one list dot enable versioning. And we'll say equals, and let's turn it off. Let's do false. Now, a couple of quick things here. You'll see that here I'm using an equal sign. And in other places, like up here, I use dash EQ. When you want to do something with data. When you want to copy data from one side of an equation to another, like I want false to be set into this. This enable versioning, I want that to be false. I don't care what it is right now. I want it to be false. That's when you use an equal sign. When you want this to be um, like checked against, that's when you use dash EQ. So I've got my one list enable versioning equals false. And what that should do is it should turn off versioning on every library in my farm, right? It's the opposite of what we wanted to do, but I think versioning is already turned on, so this will give us a good way to check. One more thing I think we need to do, one list dot update. This is something I know from before. Let's do this. We've got this one list here, right? We did select first one. Let me put that into an item called list equals, right? So we'll say list equals this. If I go to list, it should be the same thing. And what I want to do is I want to say list dot you and I want to hit tab a couple times and there it is yeah there's a list that update so there are a lot of things and I just remember this from somewhere else that when you make a change to it you have to run an update statement after that change so that the system knows that you're done probably some efficiency thing that enables it to take let's say five settings at once and instead of going back to the database five times it does it one time so let's take a look at our script now we started all the way at the top with the web applications and we went all the way down and we found our list and we've got our update. And now I think we're ready to give this a try and see if it even works. Let's go into our system here and let's look at, I guess what we can do is we'll look at the documents one here. And now let's look at the, the library settings here. So we'll go to library settings and we'll go to versioning. And we can see create versions is turned on. Now let's go see if our script even runs. It's very common for it not to run. So over here, I've got my completed script. It's saved as live PS1. It's in the scripts directory. I'm already in the scripts directory. So let's, uh, let's come over here and hit CLS. And it wouldn't hurt if I could type that right. And now let's type in live and I'm gonna hit tab. So you know in order to run a script, you have to have that dot slash in front of it. The way I always do it is I just kind of type the first few letters of the script and I tab to complete it and it does this. So look at that, it actually looks like it ran. I didn't get any output on the screen about what was happening and that reminds me that we might wanna go back and do that. Now, if you go back to that cheat sheet, you'll see that to put something on the screen, I think it says here, writing to council, we use write host. We can also put in a color. 
So what I could do is I can come back into my thing here and I might want to right here say something like write host updating, I don't know if that's spelled right, list. And then we'll put in, um, I'm not even going to worry about the name right now. We'll just do this and we'll say foreground color green. And I'm going to indent this a little bit with a couple spaces. So let's hit save here and let's go back and run this again and just see if it spits out a lot of stuff. Look at that. So it actually did a lot more than it looked like. Updated these lists. Let's go back here and let's refresh the screen. And wouldn't you know, versioning is now turned off. So we've found what we're looking for. So now to make our script that we've showed in the first part of the class where it actually turns versioning on, we just have to set that to true. And we did one other thing when we set that to true. So we'll go to one list dot. And that was called uh, versions. Do you remember that? I'm trying to think of what that thing was called. Is that list thing still in memory? Uh, I don't know if it, oh, it is. Okay, so let's do list. Well, just for time's sake, because I think we're running short, get member. And there was two things that had versions. There was um, major version limit. I think that's the one right there, major version limit. And then somewhere else there was a, something else called major versions, I thought. If we looked at that in the sense of the data, that might tell us better. Let's go and just do the list item by itself. Let all this go through here. Okay. And I thought that that was under the second set of XML. Let's take a look here. Uh, anybody see anything here? Um, enable versioning is right here. And that's now set to false. And wasn't there like a major version limit? Was that up on the top maybe? And I'll be honest with you, it was easier to find, I think, when it had 10 in the value. It doesn't now. Go back here and what do we got? Oh, I went too far. Okay, do, 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 do. So for the sake of this uh, of this class, let's go ahead and just leave that out right now. And if you had a little bit more time, you could do it. Let's run this though and see if our newly modified script, I get to the bottom of this thing here, will turn those versions on now. So we updated our list. Let's go back to SharePoint here. Let's hit refresh. And that doesn't look like it worked, does it? No versioning is set up. What did we do here? You know what we did? We didn't save. And we didn't, you know, we had this bad line too. This shouldn't have worked anyway. So let's do this, this, run our script one more time, refresh our page. And there we go. Major versions is turned on. That 10 must have stuck around from the last time that it was in there. So anyway, that's uh, that's how we go about figuring out how to set up one of these scripts. It's how I do it. I, I kind of go you know side by side with my notepad on one side and my my you know command prompt on the other. And I hope that that was helpful to you. All right, so that's the demo. I hope you found some things in there that'll really help you in your day-to-day -day use of PowerShell and trying to figure these things out. I think, it's, I think it's good stuff to know. Now, I want to talk about that little mistake that I made and what kind of the consequences would have been if it hadn't been caught and all that kind of stuff. So as you saw, even with that mistake in there, it looked like that code was running. What was really happening is that dollar sign $web variable that I put in, that was still in memory in the command prompt. I, I call it command prompt in the PowerShell prompt uh, because I'd been fiddling with it, right? Now, what would have happened is if I would have saved the file, closed out that prompt and come back to it, let's say tomorrow. Well, then that dollar sign web variable wouldn't have been in memory. And when I got to that part of the script, it wouldn't have given me the expected output. Things that might have happened is it might have given me some red text, something that I'm looking for isn't there. It might have given me no output because the variable is empty. So if we're, if we're using something that's, for example, a for each and the variable is empty, then there's nothing to do. It won't go through the loop at all, right? The, the, these things I think are, you know, they're, 
It's a little embarrassing for me. I, I didn't. I, I was tempted to take it out, but I think it's a great example of things that can go wrong. So I think there's actually more value in leaving it in there. And all the other stuff that I taught and how you integrate and all that stuff, which is really the focus of this video, that stuff is all still valid, despite the fact that I messed up as I was doing it. So uh, I hope that helped you out. Please visit my website, SharePointJack.com. I've got some great resources on there. There's a bunch of PowerShell scripts. There is the PowerShell cheat sheet and the combined PowerShell SharePoint cheat sheet, which is I think like six pages now, filled with lots of great little uh, snippets of code that are very, very handy when you're uh, when you're just getting started. Uh, so hope you'll make use of the site. If you like the video, please leave me some comments. Let me know it was good. And uh, if you have any questions, you can reach me. I'm Jack at SharePointJack.com. That's my email or at SharePointJack on Twitter. Thanks again for watching.